consistency means that dependable, steady, predictable work is always vastly superior to spurts or flashes of brilliance and genius. That the person who is like the tortoise, who just plods steadily away, old steady Eddie, is always the person who tends to be more successful than the one who flashes here and flashes there but cannot be counted on over the long term. Be consistent in your relationships, especially be consistent with your family, be consistent with your friends, be consistent with your boss, be consistent in your work. Make, you, make it so that you are the type of person that everybody can depend upon, that people will believe in and they'll depend upon and they know that if you say something that you'll do it. That if you say you'll be somewhere or if you undertake a responsibility, that you will fulfill that responsibility. That sort of consistency, that sort of dependability is one of the most valuable things in the world of work today. I work with so many companies and I have staff that work in my companies and I know that the greatest joy that an employer can have is to give a person a job and know that it'll be done. And the most aggravating thing in the world is to give a person a job and have no idea if it'll be done, if it'll be done to a particular quality, if it'll be done on time or anything else. Just being the steady person. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to... One of the things that I found, if I can pass this on to you, one of the things that I found when I was a young man, which helped, this cost me about 10 years of life, by the way, I thought that you had to have good grades in school in order to be successful. And then later I thought that you had to have a university education in order to be successful. And then later I thought that successful people are people who are somehow better than you and I. They somehow have unique talents, that somehow the gods have descended from Olympus and touched them on the heads. But one of the things that I found is that nobody is better than you or I. When you see men or women accomplishing great things, they're not better than you or I. They're not different from you or I. They're just doing things in a different way. You look at a person you went to school with who's now doing surgery as a doctor. The person's the same person, except that they've learned how to do surgery. You look at a person who you went to school with who is now an outstanding success in a particular field. All they've done is learned how to be a success in that field. And consistency. There's a, there's a law of accumulation in the universe, if I can pass this on. A law of accumulation that says that even though you do a hundred things or a thousand things that you don't see, eventually they accumulate and they gather a force of their own. That every single great accomplishment in life is the result of thousands of minor accomplishments that nobody ever sees. One of the people on the program, um, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, who had become successful as a singer, they said, isn't it wonderful that you've become so successful as a singer? She said, yes, it's wonderful. She said, but when I'm up on stage in Las Vegas and I'm making $50,000 a week or whatever it happens to be, she says, nobody sees the 16 years that I spent traveling around, living in a van, singing in cheap honky-tonks where people throw up on your piano and get drunk on the floor in front of you. Nobody sees the 16 years of living on the road, living at an average of less than $5,000 a year. What they see is the person up there on the stage. But every single great success was at one time a failure. And they failed and failed and failed and failed over and over again. And all great successes are a story of failure, 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 outstanding success. Boy, ain't he lucky. Isn't that right? Boy, he was lucky. He sure had the right connections. <clears throat> so consistency is important. And even if you don't see yourself getting the results, be consistent. Keep working. Steady, steady, steady. Knowing that you're accumulating. You're putting yourself on the side of the angels when you're working consistently. Finally, with regard to consistency, guard your integrity as a sacred thing. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing at last is sacred but the integrity of your own mind. Never compromise your integrity for anything and never compromise your peace of mind for anything. You see, compromising your peace of mind is a way of compromising your integrity. Never do anything that disrupts your peace of mind. If it makes you feel unhappy, get out of it. Don't stay in relationships, don't stay in jobs, don't stay in situations that cause your peace of mind to be disrupted because your peace of mind is the highest good that you have. And a person who practices consistency consistently structures their life so what they are doing is being true to themselves. What they are doing is living up to the very best that is in them as a human being. And that takes tremendous courage. It takes tremendous courage because it's so easy to go along with the crowd. But you'll never be really happy unless you know that you are being true to yourself. This brings us to a very important mental principle called the law of accumulation. This law says that everything great and worthwhile in human life is an accumulation of hundreds and sometimes thousands of tiny efforts and sacrifices that nobody ever sees or appreciates. This law says that everything accumulates over time, that you may have to put in many, many tiny efforts that nobody sees or appreciates before you achieve anything worthwhile. It's like a snowball. A snowball starts off very small, but it grows as it adds millions and millions of tiny snowflakes and continues to grow 
as it gathers momentum, turning into an avalanche that takes the whole mountain in front of it. Now here's the key to the law of accumulation. This law says that everything counts. Everything that you do counts. The biggest mistake that people make is they think that only what they want to count counts. No. When you read a book, when you listen to an audio program, when you go to a course, when you go to bed early and get up early and you work, it all counts. And it's all going on the plus side of your ledger. But when you watch television, waste time, hang out, fool around and so on, all of that counts as well. And it's going on the negative side of your ledger. A person who has a great life by the law of accumulation is a person who's accumulated far more credits, more pluses on the credit side than debits on the debit side. And here's an important point. If what you are doing is not moving you towards your goals, then it's probably moving you away from your goals. Nothing is neutral. Everything that you're doing is either moving you toward the things that you want to accomplish in life, the person you want to be, the wealth you want to accumulate, or it's moving you away. Everything counts. The law of accumulation says that everything counts. I got a key phrase for you. Life accumulates. We either accumulate the debt or the value. We either accumulate the regret or we accumulate the equity. That's why action is so important. The smallest action, the least action, the action that you won't think will matter. It all matters. Take it. Because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return, you'll find inspiration to do the next one and the next one and the next one. But for this whole process to work for us, we must first master the art of discipline, self-discipline, consistent self-discipline. It takes consistent self-discipline to master the art of setting goals, to master the art of time management, to master the art of leadership, to master the art of parenting and relationships. If we don't make consistent self-discipline part of our daily lives, the results we seek will be sporadic and elusive. It takes a consistent effort to truly manage our valuable time, or we'll be consistently frustrated. Our time will be eaten up by others whose demands are stronger than our own. It takes discipline to conquer the nagging voices in our minds, the fear of failure, the fear of success, the fear of poverty, the fear of a broken heart. It takes discipline to keep trying when that nagging voice within us brings up the possibility of failure. It takes discipline to admit our errors and recognize our limitations. The voice of the human ego speaks to all of us. Sometimes the voice of ego says that we should magnify our value beyond our results. It leads us to exaggerate, to not be totally honest. It takes discipline to be totally honest, both with ourselves and with others. It takes discipline to change a habit, because habits are formed a little bit each day, every day, every day. Once habits are formed, they act like a giant cable. They act like a nearly unbreakable instinct that only long-term disciplined activity can change. Set up a discipline when the emotions are high and the idea is strong and clear and powerful. That's the time to set up the discipline. Somebody talks about good health and you're stirred. I said, right, I need to get a book on nutrition. Get the book before the idea passes and before the emotion gets cold. Go for the book, start the library, start the process, fall on the floor, do some push-ups. Action, gotta take action. Otherwise, the wisdom is wasted. Otherwise, the emotion soon passes. Unless you put it into a disciplined activity, capture it. Disciplines is called how to capture the emotion and how to capture the wisdom and translate it into equity. Disciplines. You start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to get an apple. Get an apple, it'll inspire you to get a book. Get a book, it'll inspire you to get a journal. Get a journal, it'll inspire you to grow, develop some skills. All disciplines affect each other. Every lack affects the rest. Every new affects the rest. The key is to diminish the lack and set up the new and you've started a whole new life process. Also, 
One more thought on discipline. Here's the greatest value of discipline. Self-worth. Self-esteem. People are teaching self-esteem these days, but they don't connect it to disciplines. The least lack of discipline, and it starts to erode our psyche. One of the greatest temptations is to just ease up a little bit, right? The, the, the slightest lack of doing your best starts to erode the psyche. Instead of doing your best, doing just a little less than your best. Sure enough. You say, well, it's just going to affect my sales. No, it's going to affect your consciousness. It's going to affect your philosophy. Now you've begun in the slightest way to affect your own philosophy. Here's the problem with the least neglect. Neglect starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And one neglect leads to another. And the worst of all, when neglect starts, it diminishes our self-worth, our self-confidence, our self-value. You say, well, how can I get back my self-respect? All you have to do is start the smallest discipline that now corresponds to your own philosophy, like I should, and I could, and I will. No longer will I let neglect stack up on me so that I will have the sorry scenario six years from now, giving some excuse instead of celebrating my progress. That's the key to discipline. Remember, all good things are upstream. The passing of time takes us a-drifting, and drifting only brings us the negative, the disastrous, the disappointment and the failure. Failure is not a cataclysmic event. It is not generally the result of one major incident, but rather a long list of accumulated little failings. Failing in life is failing to think today, failing to act today, failing to care, to strive, to climb, to learn, to keep trying day by day. If your goal requires that you write 10 letters today and you write only three, you are down seven letters. If you want to make five calls and you only make one, you are down four on calls. If your plan calls for saving $10 today and you save none, you're down $10 today. Now the danger is looking at an undisciplined day and concluding that no great harm has been done. It doesn't seem like such a bad day. But add up these days to make a year, and then add up those years to make a lifetime, and perhaps you can now see how repeating today's small failures can easily turn your life into a major disaster. Success, on the other hand, is just the same process in reverse. If you plan to make 10 calls, and you end the day making 15, now you're up five calls. Discipline is like a set of magic keys that unlocks all the doors of wealth, happiness, sophistication, culture, high self-esteem, pride, joy, accomplishment, satisfaction, and success. The first key to discipline is awareness of the need for and the value of discipline, and especially the discipline to make the changes. What will it take? What must I do and what must I become to get all I want from my life? The second key is the willingness. More than that, the eagerness to maintain your new discipline deliberately, wisely, consistently. And the third key to discipline is the commitment to master the circumstances of your daily life, to see and harness the opportunities to make something of the sun and the rain, the good as well, as what comes in the guise of misfortune. Discipline does many things, but most important of all is what it does for you. It makes you feel better about yourself. Even the smallest discipline can have an incredible effect on your attitude. And the good feeling you get, that surging feeling of self-worth that comes from starting a new discipline, is almost as good as the feeling that comes from the accomplishment of the discipline. Second. A new discipline immediately alters your life direction. You don't change destinations immediately. That is yet to come. But you can change direction immediately. And direction is very important. Third, discipline cooperates with nature. Everything strives. It is a common life function. How tall will a tree grow? As tall as it can. Everything strives to become all it can possibly be. And that striving to become is what discipline is all about. 
disciplining ourselves to fulfill our natural potential to become all that we can be. And finally, discipline attracts opportunity. Opportunity is always looking for ambition and skill in action. Discipline taps the unlimited power of commitment. The human will in action, driven by inspiration, enticed by desire, tempered by reason, guided by intelligence, can bring you to that high and lofty place called the good life. So start the new process. You can begin a new habit no matter how small it is. Small isn't important. Whether or not you start and whether or not you continue are all that is important. You just got to go home and make a list after today. And here's the question to ask as you make this personal list. What am I not doing that would be easy to do? That could greatly change my health, my wealth. What am I not doing I'm neglecting that would be easy to do? Just go home and answer that question personally. You don't have to put the answers on a public bulletin board. This is just all personal stuff. Get a list of the stuff you could do and you haven't done, postpone, and start cleaning that up. You can't start at a better place for personal change. It'll affect your bank account, affect your future, affect your income, affect everything. You can't start a better life change process than cleaning up what you should be doing. Recognize that the start of the better life, the happy life, the wealthy life, is today. This is exciting. Both the process and the result can begin today. Start the new journey today. If you think of a new idea, today is the day to begin the discipline of putting that idea into action. Set this day up as a long, busy, exciting start for your new life. Get your first book for your new library today. Begin your new practice of setting goals today. Start clearing out a drawer of your new orderly desk today. Start eating an apple a day on your new health plan today. Put some money in your new investment for fortune account today. Start reading with intensity for your new wealth of mind plan today. Write a postponed letter today. Make a delayed telephone call today. Pick up your camera and take a picture of something to start your new treasury of photographs today. Get some momentum going on your new commitment to the better life. See how many activities you can pile on in this first day. Go all out. Break away from the negative downward pull of gravity. Start the thrusters going. Prove to yourself that waiting is over, hoping is past, and that faith and action have now taken charge. It's a new day, a new beginning for your new life. With discipline, you can't believe the list of positive moves you can make in the first day of your new beginning.